Well, while we stick it on, I'd turn it up to 11. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I get you a drink? Please. Um, what would you like? Uh, vodka and me. Uh, well, why don't you stick that on? I'll hit the bar and grab it. Okay, great. Hey, Dan. Um, a pint of shed head and a vodka and lemonade, please. I'm, uh, I'm Dave, by the way. I'm Julie. Sorry, I've, I've, uh, I've got to go. Oh, no. Um, this has been great. I'd, I'd really like to see you again. Oh. Are you, um, are you free Saturday? Are you doing anything? Um, no plans. Do you fancy catching a movie? That'd be brilliant. All right, well, I'll, um, I'll look up. I'll, I'll see what's on. Um, let me have your number. Oh. Um, oh. Just, just tap it in. I'll, I'll give you a call. Yeah, sure. Great. Um, thanks, Julie. Oh, thanks. I'll um, see you Saturday. Okay, see you. Only 50 or so boxes to go. Yeah, but then we've got to find somewhere to put all of this. <laughs> That's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> Is this another box of shoes? How many do you need? It's just the two boxes. Well, surely you can't wear them all. I don't even think we've got room for all this lot. I mean, do you need all these DVDs? Are you going to watch all of those? Fair point. <laughs> Videos? Yeah. Why have you brought videos? Do you even own a VCR? Of course I do. It's right there. How long was the last time you watched a video? That's irrelevant. Oh really? So was it in the last year, uh, two years, or maybe the last decade? So how are you finding it? You've been living with Sophie for a while now, yeah? Yeah. What's with all the cushions? I mean, the shoes. I get the shoes. A girl needs to have a choice of what she's going to be wearing. But there's so many cushions on the sofa now, I can barely sit on it. And don't get me started about the ones on the bed. On the bed? Yeah, cushions. On the bed. They're not even for sleeping on. They're for show. So you get up in the morning, make the bed, put cushions on it. Then you come back upstairs at night and have to take the cushions off the bed so you can get into it and sleep. It's crazy. Yeah, it does sound a bit. Sophie doesn't do that. Well, I care what you mean about the cushions on the sofa. I just sweep them on the floor when she's not there. Well, what do you do when she's in? Sit in a very uncomfortable position, usually. <laughs> you two are needed in meeting room three. Okay, back to work. Oh, hey, love. Hey, how was work? Oh, yeah, same old, same old. Uh, usual crises. Something wrong with your computer? Oh, I was trying to buy something on eBay and my battery died. I couldn't find the charger anywhere. Anyway, I didn't know your laptop was password protected. Well, that's just so you don't know how much porn I watch. 
I don't mind you watching porn, occasionally. I know you're a pervert. Anyway, the item's finished now. What is your password for next time? To clarify, when you say occasionally, are we talking five or six times a day? <laughs> it's, um, it's password one. With a capital P. Oh, really? You're a hacker's wet dream. Well, you didn't manage to crack it. I didn't think it'd be that simple. Ah, but that's why it works. Can't see it, bro? Oh, please. So the very genius of my password is its simplicity. It's so simple, nobody would ever expect it. Well, I'm no hacker or type of super spy, but I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. Anyway, you work for the government. That is really worrying. Yeah, but I don't work on anything sensitive or anything that anyone in their right mind would want to steal. Besides, the work laptop's got one of those passwords on it that needs changing every couple of weeks. It needs an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, my inside leg measurement. <laughs> Seriously, I ring IT every other day to get the damn thing reset. Oh, they must absolutely love you. They adore me. <laughs> so it smells good, what are we eating? Oh, pasta. Are you ready? I'll serve it up. Oh, sounds good. Hey, how was your day? Oh, it was an absolute nightmare. Oh. I've told you about Brian, haven't I? That little brat. Brian, Brian. Rough parents or really, really rough parents? Well, it's parent now. Yeah. He went off with Charlene from the newsagents. Yeah. But that's another story, I'll tell you another time. Anyway, Brian came in with his mobile phone. He would not put it away. And I literally had to prise it out of his hands. He was kicking and screaming and carrying on. So much so the headmaster came in from the other room. I just looked like I couldn't control the kids. Oh, sorry, love. Um, Did you not try the Vulcan death grip first? <laughs> <laughs> Jules! Julie! I'm home! Julie! Hi love, I'm home! Hey! Where have you been? I was starting to get worried. Oh, sorry about that. My battery died and the headmaster called an emergency meeting to discuss the Ofsted report. Anyway, how was your day? Yeah, it was alright. No emergency meetings, so mm. that's always a plus. Mm. Oh, I've got a new keyboard today. Oh, exciting times. Yep. That's me. I am living <laughs> on the roller coaster thrill ride of government employee. Anyway, I'm just getting ready. Me and the boys are going to pop down the prints if you fancy it. Oh. It's open mic night. Jake's playing. I'd love to, but I'm starving and I've got a mountain of marking to do. Um, well, no worries. Listen, I've done a curry. It's in the oven. Oh, lovely. Thanks, love. No worries. I'm, uh, I'm going to finish getting ready. Okay. Ray, Julie is working late again. Fancy a couple of beers? Yeah, why not? Here you go, mate. Oh, cheers, I could really do this today. Oh, negotiations not going well. That is an understatement. I'm preparing myself for a diplomatic incident. So, business as usual then? Yeah, pretty much. So, how's married life treating you? Well, it's not marriage. We are just living together. Mm. But, yeah, it's going really, really well. Yeah, sounds like the beginning of the end to me. You really are a ray of sunshine, aren't you? You wouldn't want me to sugarcoat it for you, would you? Sure, guess not. Right. So, what's she up to anyway? I don't actually know. Um, all she said was that she had to stay at work late again. Doesn't she work at a primary school? Yeah. They really do work these kids hard nowadays, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, how's Sophie? Yeah, Sophie's right. You know Sophie. Yeah. What's she up to tonight? Um, oh, she's probably making my dinner about now. Mm. Should, I, should I text her and let her know I'm in? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> Hey, Jim Slinkoff. Sir. What have you brought me today? Of the largest in military history, these battles were decisive in the defeat of the Nazis and the rise of the Soviet Union as an industrial and military superpower. We divide the Great War into three periods. First period, 22nd of June 1941 to the 18th of November 1942. Second period, 19th of November 1942 to the 31st of December 1943. Michal, why are you not paying attention in my class? Are you an expert in my class? Would you like to teach the rest of the class? Yet. 
English only in this class. A slip up like that could get you killed. You are lucky, you will only spend the rest of the week in the detention block. Now, the rest of you, anyone else not paying attention to this class will receive two weeks in the detention block. So I suggest you remain silent and concentrate. The third period, 1st of January, 1944, to the 9th of May, 1945. <laughs> English only, my heart. You don't want to spend another week in the detention block. So why don't you just get lost? Ow, let me go, let me go. Thank you, Mahal, I didn't want to have to hurt them. Yeah. Hey, Princess. Mahal, what are you up to? I was considering taking the day off. Why don't you join me? Why? We've got school. Now hurry up before you make us both late. Seriously, why don't you join me? It's not worth the trouble. How do you know? You've never been in trouble. I've been in trouble, just not the kind you'll have me get into. See yourself. I'm having the day off. You're crazy. I'll see you when you get out of the detention block. Uh, what would you say if I asked you to run away with me? I tell you to stop talking and get us both shot. I'm serious. So am I. Well, we've talked about this for years, like running away together and living a normal life. Yes, you've talked about it and I've thought about it, maybe even dreamed about it, but it had never worked for us. I'm going with or without you. Are you coming with me? Mikhail, get down. Oh, no. Mikhail here has broken rules. You know this. He has let himself down. He has let country down. He must pay ultimate price. Question is, what are we going to do with you, Svetlana? If your association with this traitor, you should be severely punished. Having a man in here is with three months hard labor alone. But planning to run away with him? For this, you should share his fate. I Don't interrupt me! As I was about to say, you are lucky. Your scores across all disciplines are highest in your year. Tomorrow, we are planning to send the first in a series of sleeper agents to England. We want the first to be you. But, we must pass one last test. No, no, please, we're friends, you don't have to do this, please! No, no, please, please! Welcome to England, Agent Slinkoff. I take it your accommodation is to your liking? Yes, very nice, thank you. Good, good. Now here is your new identity and everything you require. Read it, learn it, then destroy the data documents. We require you to keep fit and to continue with your martial arts. Also in the documents, are instructions of how to get in touch with us in case of emergency. You understand? Yes, sir. Good. That is all, Agent Slinkoff. You will only see me again in the event that you are activated. His name is David Vest, former Special Forces, now an active agent within MI6. We have made it that you will have chance encounter with Mr. Vest. You will make him love you. You will penetrate his life. You will move in with him, marry him if necessary. This is what you have been training for. You will copy documents, you will record conversations and pass on anything that you feel will be of use to us. The self team, we have him.
Bar 45. Slinkoff. Sir. What have you brought me today? I've copied his personal hard drive and this week's documents, but I doubt there'll be anything significant on there. He uses that laptop for personal use. What have you got from his work laptop? He locks it away when he's at home and it's password protected. I can't get past it. I use the ultrasound and I can see that they use internal tamper proofing. We may have something that can help you there. Use the black pen drive. That should automatically disable the internal security. Then use the blue one to clone the hard disk. Breaking the encryption can be done back home. It will be done. Shivering. It's cold in here. I think I'll, I think I would have a warm bath. Busy day. Busy day. <laughs> Take your bath. Oh, please. Let's mm. get off. Hey, 
Richard West. It's been a while. Did you miss me? I wouldn't go that far. We're here as I have some bad news for you. It appears that you've been made. One of our moles within the FSB has informed us that they are aware of your active status. So, what, am I being pulled out? Not exactly. More of a change of role. Disinformation. We believe that the FSB are sending an agent to try and infiltrate their way into your life. We want you to let them. Understood. Obviously, we can't have you continuing doing the work that you're really doing. But we want it to look like business as usual. Then we lead them off in the wrong direction. Now, I need your phone. We don't want the data getting into the wrong hands. Here's your replacement. This thing's even more beat up than the last one was. Yes, well, we believe it looks less suspicious when the phone is well used. I hear the next one will come with a screen pre-cracked. <laughs> As before, you'll need to act on any messages that come through on this phone. The only difference is they will be fake missions. Oh, and the bug detection has been changed on this phone. If you get within five feet of a discreet transmitting or recording device, you will receive a text message from a PPI compensation company. Right, I think that about covers everything. Go about your life as usual. Be aware that you will be followed. So try to start getting into a not too regular routine, if you know what I mean. Start going to the same place for coffee, not the same day or time, but regular enough so you can be guaranteed to be in there at least once a week. We want to make it easier for them to make contact without it seeming obvious. Okay, I know the drill. How's it going? Not good, I'm afraid. The situation has changed. Within the last hour, our FSB mole has informed us that they've seen through our ruse. They've either twigged themselves, or worse, been told. We're investigating, but as far as you and your mission are concerned, it's irrelevant. Instead of cutting their losses and pulling out, as of this very moment, Julia's receiving orders to terminate you. Terminate me? I know, it's far from ideal, but... You should be flattered. They obviously see you as a threat. Oh yeah, I'm over the moon. Yes, quite. Obviously we can't allow that to happen, so... You have been authorised to terminate her with immediate effect. You have 22 hours to complete your mission, then report to Beta 3 for immediate evac and redeployment. Do you understand? I do. Well, good luck, Agent West. I doubt we'll be seeing each other again soon. <sighs> Make sure he goes through with it. Basil's come back to life, David.
thirsty. I had to come down for a glass of water. Why are you shivering? It's cold in here. I think I'm going to have a warm bath. I do love you. I know I shouldn't, but I do. I love you. 